Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Monday, June 5th, around 8.45 p.m. Mountain Time 2023. The smoke map is showing heavy smoke coming from Quebec down into the Great Lakes region and the Northeast through the week. We also have groundbreaking footage and explanation on what is going on in Idaho with the geoglyphs that are submerged in a swamp. But the big story, Haiti, severe weather, floods, and landslides, according to civil protection, is on the rise. Keep calm. It's boom time. Let's take a look in Haiti, severe weather, floods, and landslides. On June 3rd, heavy rainfall hit the departments of Quaoas, Nipis, and Sudest and North in central causing flood triggering landslides and resulting in casualties and damage according to the haitian civil protection 15 people died eight are missing and 13,400 people have been displaced 7,475 families are affected and emergency response teams have been mobilized strong storms with heavy rain 50 to 60 mile per hour winds will move through Oklahoma as I'm speaking. The main threat for the night continues to be high winds and heavy rains. As rain returns to the central coast and thunderstorms are possible, we keep our eye on the prairies up in Canada as lethargic daily threat of severe weather reappears. Here's the full forecast. Heavy rainfall in areas of the Rockies. I don't know if you can hear it right now, but it is pouring on our tin roof. That includes the Western High Plains as well. Air quality concerns for the Great Lakes region and later this week for the Northeast. A persistent pattern across the West will continue the threat for additional showers and thunderstorms along with heavy rainfall through Tuesday which is happening now. A storm to the east of the Gulf of Maine will keep cooler temperatures and showers for New England, and air quality alerts are in effect for the Great Lakes region and lower New England. For Puerto Rico, excessive heat continues for the lower elevations. So heads up, we're going to get some smokiness. Take a look at the smoke map. We'll play it through here. We'll actually bring it through to today. There's the beginning. So you can see that smoke moving through the Great Lakes region, but pushing down into New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, as we make our way through Wednesday and into Thursday. If we don't have any precipitation to quelch these fires, the situation here in Western New York could get quite dramatic, choking out the people in Rochester and Buffalo over the next few days. So heads up if you're in those regions and you are susceptible like with asthma or other upper respiratory issues. Now, China's colder than average May, hey, hey, and extreme chills grip Northern Europe. Shut up, Al, get in your hole. It is cold over the entire continent of Australia. These are temperature anomalies. And Europe as well, we've got Southern Spain. All of Spain, it's insane, well below normal, as well as Northern Italy and parts of, well, across the Baltics there. And that is going to be the way of the temperature anomaly. Let's take a look here. All right, and we're back. So we're going to play this through. You can see how the temperature anomaly switches from cold to hot. Hot in the north, cold in the south. Take a look at northern Africa coming in and out of extreme cold at night and warming up during the day. So this is a grand solar minimum pattern. Extreme colds and extreme heat repeating again and again on and on that is not good for crops take a look at some of these anomalies coming in for spain and after it gets hot it gets cold so we're talking 20 30 degree swings here all through june and we'll take a close look at the map here in the u.s let's just play this through there's going to be very little threat for severe weather it's just going to be pop-up storms in the afternoon day after day here four corners region as well as the West Coast, not any significant severe weather threat that's long-term that will be moving through the system. It's going to be just pop-up storms at each and every afternoon for much of the plains and the central U.S., as well as the southeast as we move through next week. Seismic update, no quakes of note. We've had some interesting rumblers intracratonic in North and South America, Central America. Here's a 4.2 in Mexico. Who knew? Strange quake rumbling off the Gulf of Mexico at 3.3. We've had some other quakes in Tennessee and Virginia and inland here. 
But overall, nothing spectacular or to bring an eyebrow. We have a small gathering of quakes here in central, western, South America, but that's pretty much normal activity. We do have some interesting rumblers over in Iceland as a whole. We did have a 3.4 in Bartabunga, which is not indicative of anything happening there. Just some drop down in the caldera as we are waiting for the next eruption. Overall, the seismicity in Iceland is quite quiet. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Everything is looking spectacular on the volcanic front. Nothing of interest. All normal activity. Ebiko in Pashmir Island in the Kuriles. Volcanian activity continues with some spectacular footage. Not significant in any way. What else is not significant is solar maximum. Solar cycle 25 is a dud. All solar indices are dropping and we are going quiet in the middle of solar max here. Three-day geomagnetic forecast is KP nothing. There could be some chemtrails, which are not chemtrails, just cosmic ray spikes in persistent contrails. There has been no significant activity in flaring. There are sunspots, but they are doing nothing. And because of this solar minimum, this grand solar minimum activity, we're going to be reaching out to Zarkova to discuss her newest paper. So stay tuned for that interview as we look at a live view of near-Earth asteroids on NASA's official. And here it is live. We're just running this live. Let's just hit the play. This is a live view of the near-Earth asteroids according to the official NASA stream. Give them a thumbs up. They are not making it up. This is real-time data. Now, how, how long will the new supernova be visible in the night sky? Well, over a year. So scientists expect it will slowly fade away until it can no longer be seen in visible light. And if you haven't had a chance to observe the new supernova exploding in the night sky, don't worry. It should be around for at least another year, maybe more, and it won't vanish quickly. Scientists expect it will slowly fade away until it can no longer be seen invisible light. Here's the arrow pointing to the supernova in question. The new supernova first burst into view on May 19th when supernova hunter Kayochi Itikaki from Yamagata, Japan, spotted a new bright spot in the pinwheel galaxy. And take a look at the bright spot as the rain ever increases pouring on our heads. Caution! Colorado Lake closed to fishing due to chemical exposure. Now, they blame this on agricultural herbicides. Yes, herbicides used for agriculture, but these are the dangerous herbicides used by the National Forest and Park System. We're talking about Milestone, one of the most toxic substances you can spray on earth, but they're saying it's safe to use to kill plants that they don't want. The only problem is it kills all animals and biological life when it runs into the waterways. Good job, government. We love you. More poisonous chemicals being fed to you. This one, advertently, the other inadvertently, sucralose. You all know it. It's the yellow packet. Yes. Splenda. Splenda is not a safe alternative to anything. In fact, this sweetener is now known to damage DNA and does cause cancer. So if you've been eating Splenda, I'm sorry. If you've been baking with it, you're making your dishes carcinogenic. Anything that's created by a multinational corporation that claims it's better for you is probably poison. And this has been proven now for five decades. Why anybody eats processed or ultra-processed food is beyond me. We need to go back to basics. And Splenda is certainly not one of the basics. Now, murderers and criminals. Meteorologists face unprecedented harassment from conspiracy theorists. Now, the good news is this is mostly happening in Europe. But the bad news is that four years ago, today, someone came to kill me here because they thought that I controlled the weather. That is how bad and delusional some of these conspiracy theorists are getting. And, well... Take heed to the insanity that is the world that you live in. As gas prices could spike after Saudi Arabia oil production cut is on purpose. Some U.S. states could pay 5 to 15 cents more at the gas pump in just the next week. Now, a mysterious human species may have been the first to bury their dead earlier than 100,000 years that we thought. Now, 400, 300,000 years ago. Homo naledi may be burying their, uh, their dead 
in funerary practices. This blows the lid off of archaeology by tens, if not hundreds of thousands of years. Yes, this is a small brain member of the human family tree called Homo naledi, and it would predate the earliest known burials by at least 100,000 years. It looks like they're actually sacrificing them there, but they're not. It's just a bad artist depiction. Come check out the video by History with Kaylee, just published a few hours ago on the groundbreaking new discovery of Homo naledi burials and engraved cave art. Give them a thumbs up. Tell them Diamond sent you. Now we're about to uncover our own archaeological mystery and we think we have solved the puzzle. Why are these geoglyphs, which are so spectacular and they are so pervasive over tens of square miles in the Camas Prairie Central Mile Marsh Wildlife, why are they unstudied? Why are they hard to get to? Well, because they're hard to get to and they're unstudied. There are literally millions of mosquitoes in this region and just to walk out here, which I did the other day into this area here, takes some moxie as well as mosquito netting and quite a bit of self-control. So what we have uncovered is that these geoglyphs were once only raised a small amount above the prairie floor, maybe just 12 inches. But in recent history, in the last hundred years, this prairie has been flooding completely and these geoglyphs are now underwater. Now, what has occurred in the last hundred or several hundred years is that the biology has taken over and that certain marsh grasses that grow on elevated lands started to appear here in the central marsh, delineating these geoglyphs and making them ever more visible from space. Now, the significance of the Camas Prairie Centennial Marsh Wildlife Management Area is that tens of thousands of natives came here to harvest the bulbs of the Camas flower. Common Camas bulbs or Camisa Quamish are delicious and they are edible. There is a picture of the bulbs that the natives were harvest harvesting by the thousands of pounds to survive through the year. And the scientific paper, the abstract, all that is coming in the next few weeks. And that is a boom to knowledge. I hope you got something out of the video. I'm exhausted. I've driven 1,200 miles in the last four days, got eaten by millions of mosquitoes, and uncovered some of the most spectacular scientific discoveries in North America in decades. Please share this video. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. And be safe. That is boom. Mm -hmm.